بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس تقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجال كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله خير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما اللهم أصلح لنا شأننا كله ولا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين أما بعد First and foremost, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for everything. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for blessing us with health. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for blessing us with the greatest ni'mah and the greatest blessing, that being the blessing of Islam and Iman. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us firm upon al-Islam. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us and pardon us for our mistakes and for our shortcomings. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase us in khair and to make us from those who are upon the path of goodness. As uh, we are all participating and taking part in benefiting by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's permission from this program uh, in the hopes of preparing ourselves for you know, the journey that we are all on to the afterlife. It is a highway and a pathway that we are all upon and we are headed to that direction without any avoiding it. Each and every one of us are on that path where we are headed towards the afterlife through the gateway of passing away and death. So while we are alive now and while we are in this dunya now, the objective and the goal is for us to make sure that we are on the right lane. We are on the right path. That which will lead us to paradise and to al-jannah to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from amongst them and we ask Allah to protect us from misguidance inshallah ta'ala in this particular talk that we're going to inshallah you know uh, discuss today is with regards to the importance of being upright for the young people for youth. Now the question we might ask ourselves is why are we specifying the youth? Why are we why are we talking about the youth in particular when being upright is something that is required for everybody? Why are we placing the importance in discussing uprightness for the youth? And what is the relationship or what does that have to do? The young person being upright upon their deen someone who is practicing their religion, somebody who's living by obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and staying away from that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited, what does that have to do with this journey that we are upon in the afterlife? So to begin with, the answering the question of why specifically the young people and the youth is because we have to understand and realize the importance of that time period in one's life. That time period where a person is young, where a person is in their early teens, in their teenage years, the person is in their 20s, even in their 30s, and how significant and important those critical, crucial years are in the life of the believer to potentially shape and, you know, uh, uh, fix their path towards this journey that we're talking about in this whole conference. 
which is getting to al jannah and getting to uh and, and attaining the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this young this age you know this age this time period in our lives is so critical in establishing the foundations and the building blocks for that journey and that's why it's very important for us to keep that in mind when we're specifying the discussion about the young people and the youth and that age that youthful age and taking advantage of that youthful age also another reason why it's important for us to take into consideration you know you know reminding ourselves about the importance of you know the that age and you know those who are of that age who are still young who are still in their you know in their 20s and in their 30s and are still young and haven't reached old age yet reminding them and making it a point to emphasize the importance of this time period in their lives is something that we saw the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam do so that in essence what i'm trying to say is in following the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in advising the young people and giving them guidance towards that which is the most beneficial for them in that age in that time period when they're in that age was something that the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself did and there are many many examples where we see the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam specifically advising and giving guidance to the young people of the community the hadith that we all know في الصحيحين في البخاري ومسلم in which the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said يا معشر الشباب من استطاع منكم الباءة فليتزوج فإنه أغض للبصر وأحسن للفرج فمن لم يصدع فعليه بالصوم فإنه له وجاء messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم he mentioned in this particular narration speaking to the youth he called them up specifically oh young people Whoever has the ability to get married, then let him do so. Why? The Prophet ﷺ gave some reasons as to why it's important for the young person to get married. Marriage is not specifically for young people. An old person can get married as well. Somebody who's in their 50s and the 60s has the, and has the ability to get married, man or woman, are, it's permissible and it's allowed for them to get married. So why is the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam emphasizing in this speech here and his khitab when he's speaking? Why is he emphasizing the young people? Because of the importance there is within that age that they're in to fulfill the act of marriage, as an example. And he gave the reason sallallahu alaihi wasallam because it is good for the it, it 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 helps the young person lower their gaze and it's better for their private parts. And if they're unable to get married then upon them is fasting because there's a means and a way out for them when they fast the point i'm trying to make is that is an example where we see the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam giving tawjih and guidance and advice towards the younger generation of the muslim population and the muslim ummah and we have many many other examples some of which we'll talk about inshallah ta'ala throughout our talk today This particular um, discussion of ours is really motivated by a hadith. The topic of our discussion today is motivated by a specific hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The hadith in which the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Sabatun yudilluhum Allah fi dhilli yom la dhilla illa dhillu." The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, seven people on the day of judgment will be shaded. On the day where there is no shade except the shade." of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the shade of his throne tabarak wa ta'ala and the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned seven categories of people the first one of them being imamun adil a ruler a person who's in charge in authority of the muslims of the people and that person who's in charge and is an authority is somebody who is just a believing ruler who is a mu'min and is just just to the people and his subjects that individual will be from those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant them shade when there is no shade except the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when the seriousness of what's happening and taking place on yawm al-qiyamah is taking place that individual will be you know under the mercy of Allah subhanahu 
wa ta'ala and under the shade of his throne. Immediately after that uh, first category, and that first category has its importance, which we're not necessarily going to get into because of time and it's not the topic of the discussion at the moment. The Prophet ﷺ then followed it up by mentioning the young person. A young person that ra was raised, huh, cultivated in the ibadah and in the worship and in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Hafiz ibn Hajar, rahimahullah ta'ala, in his explanation of this hadith in Fath al-Bari, he said, Rahimahullah ta'ala, khassa al-shababa likawnihi madinnata ghalabati al-shahwa. He said, the reason why the young people were specified in this hadith, right? The reason why they were specified is because the nature of youthfulness and being young is that Generally speaking, it is where the young person is really pressured with regards to desires. The desire and the sorry, the want that the young person has to fulfill his desires is very, very strong at that age. Why didn't the Messenger of Allah say an old person who is in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Why was the young person specified? Because that age that the young person is in, there is a strong sense of wanting to fulfill their desires. And then he said the reason. Because of the fact that there is a strong urge from the young person to fulfill their own desires and to follow their desires. The young person wants to, whether those desires are physical desires, whatever it might be, right? Their hawa is pushing them and encouraging them to do whatever it is that, to fulfill whatever it is that it requires. So that is a real, real motivating, pushing urge within the young people and the young population of human beings, that urge is there. So that urge, which is a very, very strong urge, okay, in spite of that, in spite of that urge that is innate within the young person, this young person who is now obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it a point to fight that urge and actually put effort into, you know, curtailing and avoiding and pushing down and, you know, pushing that urge away by obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Staying away from that which Allah has prohibited. Obeying, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibn Hajr continues in Fath al-Bari explaining this hadith. And he says, فَإِنَّ مُلَازَمَةَ الْعِبَادَةِ مَعَ ذَلِكَ أَشَدُّ وَأَدَلُّ عَلَى غَلَبَةِ التَّقْوَى He said, however, this young person who has this strong urge of fulfilling the desires that they have, right? In spite of that, you know, that desire and that urge being there, the fact that they do mulazama and they hold on to and they stay firm in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that desire in play and in as a part of their you know their reality that is an indication that you know uh, that is an indication of how strong their taqwa is and that the, you know that taqwa which is obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and staying away from Allah's prohibitions which is being conscious and aware of Allah seeing you, right? Doing those acts of obedience, that feeling or, or that act of doing obedience overpowers, right? And goes and, and, and defeats the urge that the young person has to follow their desires. So you have two things fighting each other here. You have the urge that the young person has within them to fulfill their desires. And then you have the opposite, which is fighting that, the you know, the, 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 the effort that the young person puts into obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, staying away from that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited. And when that taqwa overcomes and, you know, does ghalaba and takes over and pushes away those desires or at least to the best of their ability, you know, minimizes it, that itself is a tremendous effort 
res resulting and and as a result of that, that person is deserving to have this elevated status. The status of what? That they are in the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Yom Al-Qiyamah. At that young age, with that pressure that is there, that they overcome it. Right? And one thing that we have to come to realize and understand is in general, whenever you have a serious, you know, uh, pressure or serious, when, when there is a desire that is, you know, that the person has or an urge, a natural urge a person has, when that is fought off, and the effort that is put into fighting off that urge, the reward is more for the person. Right? The reward is more for the person. Versus, versus, and the opposite of that is, when the person does not have the urge, and there's nothing necessarily pressuring the person to do evil actions and evil deeds, yet the person still is insistent in doing those evil deeds, then we see based on the evidences that the punishment is severe. Because there's on one hand, you know, the, 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 what, is, what is pushing you towards those desires is a strong urge, yet the person is fighting it, fighting themselves to stay away from fulfilling that urge. The reward is tremendous. Here, as the hadith mentions, look at the status they're given under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's throne on the day where there's no shade but the shade of Allah. But on the other hand, if the person does not have the urge, yet they're insistent in disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is an indication that that person is someone who has evil in them. Right? There's evil in them in their disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the reward is, uh, sorry, and the, and, and the punishment is severe for that individual. I'll give you an example of a narration. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in a hadith in Sahih Muslim, when Nasa'i in the hadith Abu Huraira, radiyallahu an, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, thalathatun, la yukallimuhum allahu yawm al-qiyamati, wa la yuzakkihim, Four severe punishment. Look at this. Four things. Allah said, first and foremost, these three groups of people on Yom Al Qiyamah, Allah will not speak to them. One. Allah will not look at them in a way of being merciful to them. Allah will not look in that direction. Allah will not purify them, meaning Allah will not forgive them of their misdeeds. And they will be punished severely in the hellfire. Who are these three? The first one, the Prophet ﷺ said, Shaykhun Zanin. An old man, an elderly person, who is constantly committing adultery, fornication, huh? illegal sexual relations. He's an old man and he's busy and he is constantly involved in zina. Now you have an old person and generally it is known that an old person does not necessarily have that urge driving them to commit haram or to, or to fulfill their desires, I should say, like the young person. Yet with the absence of that urge, the person is still insistent in committing that sin consistently. That is an indication and that is why they're punished severely. Because we understand that the old person, that's the nature, the natural disposition or the natural way of an elderly person is, you know, they have experience, they have more knowledge, they can dis make a distinction with what is right and what is wrong. For the most part, they're very, very, you know, it takes time, you know, they take their time in making decisions. They don't fly off the handle in terms of just doing whatever they, it is that they want to do. That's those type of characteristics are normally found in young people it's not necessarily there in old people with regards to old people they know they, they tend to be more controlling of themselves there's a hadith with the prophet ﷺ mentioned or incident that happened during the time of the prophet ﷺ. this narration some of the ulama say it's weak others say it's hasan the prophet ﷺ one day was sitting in the masjid with the companions and a man came to the messenger of allah ﷺ, an old man and he said ya rasulullah the Messenger of Allah, can I kiss my wife while I am fasting? The Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, Naam, yes, you can. Shortly after, a young man came to the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and he said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, can I kiss my wife while I'm fasting? The Prophet وسلم, said, No, la. 
So the companions began looking at each other, confused, quite understandably, because the Messenger of Allah was asked the same question twice, and he gave two completely opposite answers. So the Messenger of Allah, after seeing that, he looked at the companions, and he said, I see you looking at each other, confused about what just happened. And then he explained himself, sallam, and he said, Inna shaykha yamliku nafsahu. That the old person can control himself. The old person can control himself. So if he kisses his wife, he does not have that urge to take things further. And we all know that if in the person is fasting in the day of Ramadan, it's not permissible to ha engage in intimacy with one's spouse during the day of Ramadan, during the day while fasting. Okay? So the young person, there's a possibility that if they do that, and they kiss their wife, there's a possibility that one thing might lead to another, and they will jam up their program with regards to their Ramadan and their fasting. So the Prophet is telling this young person, no, don't do it. While the old person, he allowed him to do so. What is my point of mentioning that? The point of me mentioning that is that normally with elderly people, that urge is not there like the young person, right? Also, young people are known not to think necessarily before doing. They do and then think later. Right? Their lack of experience and their lack of, you know, understanding and life lessons at times causes them to just be quick off the handle and not necessarily think things through. Prophet when he talked about the khawarij, one of the things he described the khawarij when he said the people that will come out and they will, you know, break off from the ummah of the Muslims from their descriptions that he gave وسلم, about them was that they were hudatha'ul asnan, sufaha'ul ahlam. Huh? That they were young in age and when it came to their reasoning they were very very you know dim-witted if that's the right term to use right they were not using they were not using their sense properly right why their age was mentioned because that's a big factor in that lack of experience lack of life lessons lack of mentoring possibly fall you know the desires that are there that they have you know be, be, the passion that they have the, of things that they want to do is very very strong so that is what is known with young people. But when an old person engages in following their desires, while there's nothing to push them towards that, then that is indication that the person has an evil in them. And that's what Prophet Sallallahu mentioned here, that they have the severe punishment. Similarly for the other two categories, Malikun Kadhab, a king. Well, Malikun Kadhab, a king who is a liar. A king. This is the person who's the top, you know, you know ruler, the monarch of the land. He owns everything. Everyone reports to him. Yet he's consistently lying. What is pushing him to lie? What is there that he requires? What is there that is forcing him to lie? Lying is normally a characteristic that is known for people who generally are scared, are concerned. You know, they're trying to hide things. You know, they're worried. Right? That's what will cause them to lie. For the most part. But when you are running the whole show in the country and you have everything you need, what is forcing you to be a pathological liar? What is forcing you to be a liar? And similarly, the third one, وَعَائِرٌ mustakbir, A poor person who is arrogant. A poor person is, not, is probably homeless, has no clothing, proper clothing, has nowhere to stay, does not have a stable income. He's poor. He's begging. He's begging. Yet, he's arrogant. He's got his chin up and his nose up and he's putting people down. Right? Normally, arrogance is something that is that, that accompanies a person that has riches. A person has money, they have a nice car, nice house, good life. They That will normally push them towards looking down at others. But when you got nothing going for yourself, yet you are somebody who's arrogant, that's an indication of some type of evil that you're mixed up in. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbid. The point of this, me mentioning that, is the, 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 the youthful nature and the youthful exuberance that you know that that is there with regards to the need to fulfill certain urges, right? Without necessarily thinking about consequences, is a reality amongst young people. That's a reality that we live with as young people. Okay, it's a reality that is there. But when, in spite of that reality, the person is blessed by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to be somebody who's obedient to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and puts the effort because it requires a lot of mujahada and effort puts in the work and puts in the effort to fight that off, that is an indication of virtue. And that's why they're, they're elevated. 
And that's why we have other narrations where the Prophet is telling us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is amazed with the young person who does not, you know, engage in, you know, youthful mistakes or, you know, one that is very, very you know, engaging with regards to just following their desires without, without you know, controlling themselves. Right? Without controlling themselves. So we see clearly that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is mentioning in this hadith and other narrations as well the importance that is placed in the young person utilizing that time period in their life. Right? And, and the young person having the ability to control their desires in spite of this, the strong, you know, motivation that is there from their hawa to fulfill that is indication of how, um, you know, honored that person is. And keep in mind, because of the fact that it's so difficult, it's very rare. It's very rare that that will be the reality of the young person. For the most time, for the most part, the young person will forget, will slip up, will make mistakes, and will not, you know, and will be very willing, easily willing to follow their shahawat and their desires. And if we superimpose or kind of, you know, take that reality that we're talking about, that, 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 that theory that we just mentioned, and superimpose it into the reality of what we're experiencing now in the world that we're living in today with the, with the spread of social media and the, and, and the fitna and the facade and the corruption that is being pumped at us through these different social media outlets, right? And how easy it's becoming, easier and easier it's becoming for young people to fall into the trap of fulfilling their desires. It becomes even more difficult for a young person to actually make it a point to strive and struggle and work hard and being upright and being an obedient servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It becomes even more difficult. It becomes even more challenging. But I want to make, I want to remind myself first and remind everybody that, like I said earlier, with the challenge being greater, the reward that the person reaps as a result of struggling to be upright is also greater. And if a person really puts the effort and they try their best at that age, at that young age, in being upright, despite all of the challenges that are coming towards us, the reward is great. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it easy for us how difficult it's become and how easy sinning is. How difficult it has become to lower our gaze and how easy it has become to look at haram. How difficult is it become to cover ourselves and to cover that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us to cover and how easy it has become to expose that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us not to expose. Right? How easy it's become to publicly now expose our mistakes and our sins and how difficult it has become to stay firm and to be upright huh? as a young person. We are at a point now, we are at a time now where on social media, when somebody is doing something that is clearly haram, clearly in opposition to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants, clearly something that is sinful, the person is cheered on for and they're encouraged. And everybody gives the person positive reinforcement for disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they're doing. And when the person attempts, attempts, tries in a nice way, private or public, to say, you know, this is not right, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the most part, I'm not going to say every time, for the most part, they are shunned. Either they will be shunned publicly and they'll be told, what are you doing? It's none of your business. You live your life and let the person live their life. Who do you think you are? Iman is in your heart. It's, it's about what's inside here. It's not about what you're exposing in public. As long as I know in my heart I'm good, then I'm okay. I can do whatever I want. This is the, li the line of reasoning we're living, that people are, you know, are now living by. And when we attempt privately, there are times when the person is sincere and, the, and, and they will be, you know, thankful because not a lot of people will go out of their way to advise. But most of the time, it will be flipped back on the person. Who do you think you are? You think you're better than me? You think you don't have faults yourself? Just because you're wearing a hijab, you think you're not a bad person either? 
I know a lot of people that are wearing hijab that are very, very evil. But people that are not wearing hijab that are good people. I know a lot of guys that go clubbing that are very, very good-hearted. And a lot of, I know a lot of brothers that are in the masjid that are the worst of the worst. This is what's being pushed now, right? Not because, and the, and the main reason for that being pushed is what? To minimize, right? To, the person is trying to make themselves feel good in, their, in, in, the, in the wrong that they're doing. They know deep down inside that they're sinning and they're doing something that is wrong. Because that's the nature of all human beings. We all make mistakes. We all make mistakes. No one is perfect. We all commit mistakes. But many of us are in denial of accepting the wrong that we're doing. We're in denial. We don't want to accept it. And when somebody tries to be kind enough to help you out, because the person who's actually talking to you and telling you, you know, giving you, you know, a piece of advice to try to, to leave that off, you know, they really want khair for you. Right? If, so, if somebody's trying to tell you something that will save you from the hellfire, they're not doing it because they're trying to attain any brownie points. At least apparently. Only Allah knows people's intentions. If somebody's coming to me and telling me, Akhi, and giving me advice, I'm, I'm, I'm certain that they're not doing it to attain brownie points over me. For the, for, from the apparent. From the apparent. My point is, the point I'm trying to make here is, that it's become so easy, it's become so easy to be encouraged to do evil. And it's become so discouraging for many to become, to be somebody who's practicing because of the reality that exists. People pressuring them. Oh, you, you're, not, you're, not, you're not trying to have fun? You're not trying to party? What do you think you are? Are you a saint all of a sudden? Well, you know, you think you, you know, you're promised paradise? Come on, man. You know, why don't you, you know, just relax? Take it easy. Blow off some steam. You know, you got time. Once you grow up and you get older, then you're going to go, you know, for hajj, do hajj, get all your sins forgiven, and, you know, alhamdulillah. But that's not the reality of how the world works. As inshallah, you will see in some of the talks coming up. That's not how the world works. That's not how the dunya works. This dunya is temporary, and we are on a path and on a journey to the, to the akhirah and to the afterlife. So now, getting back to our point of at this particular age that we are in, what, are, what is it that we need to do? What is it that we need to keep in mind with regards to staying upright? Right? What is it that we need to do with regards to, as a young person, keep in mind when it comes to staying upright? And I want to focus on how the Messenger of Allah وسلم, advised young people to take guidance from that. Because the Messenger of Allah وسلم, is Uswatun Hasana. He's the best example for us to follow. He is the one that we have been commanded to follow. How did the Messenger of Allah وسلم, advise? You know, what are some of the examples of how he gave advice to young people? Alayhi salatu wasalam. And also, what does the Quran tell us with regards to some of these stories of young people and their efforts that they used and they put into trying to be upright. Trying to be upright. And I want to, you know, wrap up this discussion with the hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he was giving that advice to Abdullah ibn Abbas. When he was giving nasiha to Abdullah ibn Abbas. Abdullah ibn Abbas was a cousin of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he was very young in age. In fact, when the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam died, and passed away, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abdullah ibn Abbas was just beginning the age of puberty. 12 years old, 13 years old, Allahu A'lam. But he just began, you know, re he just reached the age of puberty around the time when the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, passed away. So he was young. And Ibn Abbas said that one day I was with the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, began to give me nasiha. Again, going back to the point I mentioned in the beginning, that this is something the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, would do. Giving inaya and giving and putting, you know, uh, you know, showing importance to the younger generation, not dismissing them, like what happens in our communities, where the young person is just dismissed. Ah, they're six years old, they're seven years old, they're only nine years old, they're still babies. They don't understand. No, they understand. They understand, but it's what you project onto them, and what and how you talk to them. That they'll take it in because children are very, very intelligent. Young people are very, very smart, right? We shouldn't downplay youth and the intellect and the sharpness that they have. 
Ibn Abbas is a young boy and the Prophet is talking to him. Ya Ghulam, inni wa'allimuka kalimat. I'm going to teach you a few words. I'm going I'm to give you some advice. Pay attention. Look where the Prophet began. And when we start talking about these advices here that the Prophet these pieces of advice the Prophet is giving to Abdullah ibn Abbas, it's not specifically for youth. Even the elderly will definitely benefit from it. But what I, what we find amazing in the guidance of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, is the Prophet وسلم, is instilling in this young person very, very important concepts that the person needs to be upright from a very young age. He's instilling in this young boy values of being connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Values of obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Staying away from that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited. Right? Asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Relying fully upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Understanding full well that Allah will protect you. Not being concerned and worried about the creation. Not being concerned and worried about impressing the creation. Not being concerned and worried about what people will think. Not being concerned and worried about how people might harm you if you do not stand up for your values in terms of being a Muslim, an obedient servant of Allah, a follower of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. These are values that are being instilled in this young boy, Abdullah ibn Abbas, by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ihfadillah yahfadhik, the Prophet sallam said. Ihfadillah, be mindful of Allah and Allah will protect you. Obey Allah, Allah will protect you. Stay away from anything that Allah said to stay away from, Allah will protect you. Keep Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your mind and be conscious that Allah sees you. And if you live by that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect you. Tajidhu tujahak, the Prophet said. You will find him in front of you, meaning you will find him protecting you. You will be in the ri'ayah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah's protection. When you want to ask, fas'alillah. When you need assistance, you're going through a difficult time, you know, life has thrown you lemons, you're going through a difficulty, turn to Allah. Ask Allah for assistance. Ista'in billah. Allah is the one alone that we ask for assistance. And we turn to Allah alone. Tabarak wa ta'ala. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. The Prophet then, then tells Ibn Abbas radiallahu an, remember, remember and know. Lo ujtama'at the whole ummah, the Prophet said, the whole ummah, if the entire ummah, if everybody comes together to try to help you out, to try to give you some type of benefit, the only benefit that they will add on to your life is that which Allah allowed them to. So if Allah is the one who allowed them to benefit you this way, and there's no other way they can benefit you, then the message is, connect yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rely fully upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the opposite is true. وَإِنْ اجْتَمَعُوا عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَضُرُّوكَ بِشَيْءٍ لَمْ يَضُرُّوكَ إِلَّا بِشَيْءٍ قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكَ They will not be able to harm you in any way if they even tried, except for that which Allah has allowed them to do so. I'm worried. I can't pray when I'm at school. I, I can't properly wear my hijab. You know, I don't want to really display, you know, my, my, my practicing of, you know, being a Muslim because I'm worried. I'm going to be ridiculed. People are going to talk bad about me. I might lose my job. I might, you know, be some, you know, I might not have friends. These are all thoughts in the person's mind that are being pushed by shaitan. The reality is if we connect ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nobody can do anything to us except for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows. No one. Prophet Sallallahu said this is, and this is part of understanding what has already been preordained and destined by Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. The pens have been lifted and the papers have dried. Right? Whatever, you know, has been written for you to get, you'll get. Whatever has not been written for you to attain, you'll never get. Teaching you that in that sense, I should not go for something that is haram. I should not try to earn money that is haram. I can't find no job. I can't find no way of making an income. So I'm going to force myself and resort myself to making a haram income. I'm going to sling drugs. I'm going to live the street life. I'm going to, you know, do things that are haram. 
Where is our connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Understanding that what is written for you to come will come. But purify ourselves in terms of our relationship to Allah, in terms of our obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in terms of doing that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to do, staying away from that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited. These are values that the Messenger of Allah is teaching a young person. Because when the young person is cultivated with this type of mindset, then that is what will help them be upright for as long as they live by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's permission. So the, 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 the point that I'm mentioning this is we go back to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa and see how much emphasis he put on cultivating and reminding the young people about the importance of being upright. And we take those hidayat and those guidance from the, from, from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa for ourselves and for our youth and for our young people even though it is ap applicable to everyone, but the young people are special. Because through the rectification of our youth and the young people is the rectification of the next generation. If the young people are misguided and are off the path and are not productive when it comes to their deen as well as their dunya, then the next generation is going to be, you know, in a situation of disaster. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that. So that's why it's important for us to keep that in mind. As a young, as young people, if you're young, if you're still in your 20s, if you're still in your 30s, you're still fairly young. You still have a lot of time. Don't think that it's all done. And I've committed so much wrong, there's no turning back. No, there's a means of turning back, but you got to do it now. You got to make that decision now to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to ask Allah for forgiveness. Allah wants you and I to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shaytan and those who are following the way of Shaytan, they are the ones that want to detract you from the correct path. Huh? Those people who are following their desires, that they don't want to be upright, they are the ones that want you to be misguided. So, inshallah, I'm going to conclude. With that point in this session, bidnillah ta'ala. And inshallah ta'ala, as you can see on the screen there, it says part one. Inshallah, we're going to have a part two on the same topic. And in the part two, I want to take the opportunity to reflect on a specific story mentioned in the Quran, which is directly correlated and directly related to the discussion that we have today of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while young, striving and working hard towards fulfilling the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while young and the struggle that it's the struggle that that is involved in it and the reward that is there that is in place for those young people who make it a point to fight off the desires that are there whether those desires are desires that are shahawat or even worse those are doubts right when i say doubts i mean you know understanding ideologies, beliefs that are in complete opposition to that of the book, the Quran and the Sunnah and the understanding of the pious predecessors, right? The reality of the world that we're living in where we're being bombarded with all of these isms that are in total and polar opposition of what it is to be a, submi a, a, a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has submitted fully to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and has followed and is following the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So inshallah in our next, um, in our next session inshallah, and you can see that on the schedule, inshallah I want to take that session, the opportunity to kind of discuss and reflect upon a specific story from the Quran and take lessons from that in regards to this specific topic. If there's anything that I have said that is of good, it's from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, any shortcomings, any mistakes, uh, any slip-ups, it's from my own shortcomings and my lack of understanding uh, and from shaitan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from that. Hada wallahu ta'ala a'la wa a'lam wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.